Hello, Alicia. Hi, how are you, Christy? I'm good. I'm so glad that you're on because we have had different conversations on your podcast and just even before that. And it's time that we record again so that people can be a fly on the wall to hear all the goodies that you have to share. <laughs> Same. I completely agree. Like our first uh, phone conversation was one that actually I wish was recorded because it was just so great. And I feel like it would be so helpful to other people. So I know we're going to probably touch on some of those things today and I'm excited to share. We are so many of them. So before we even jump in, cause I can, I can easily just start running with you. I want you just to share with everybody. So I, I know of you from two avenues of your life in regards to the integrative divorce group and then your podcast, but I want you to share both of those and then anything else that you want listeners to know about you. Yeah, sure. So I'm Elisha Partain. Um, I am the Director of Marketing and Business Development for Integrative Divorce Group. It is a virtual mediation and virtual divorce coaching service that we provide to people in all 50 states. And um, we really believe that we should change the culture of divorce um, in our country. It's, it's very toxic. And we are trying to create a space where people can heal through the process as opposed to having to heal from the process. Um, and then you also know me from my podcast, um, The Day You Almost Quit. It's an entrepreneurial podcast um, where I like to interview people about overcoming adversity. And also we touch on a lot of other subjects such as mental health and things that affect everybody, but also are really predominant in the entrepreneurial space. And then I'm also a public speaker um, and I speak on releasing yourself from shame and also getting in touch with your intuition. So yeah, I kind of, I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> but there's a clear link. And that's what I was talking to you about before we jumped on to record is that specifically within the integrative divorce group and your podcast, the day you almost quit, they both have to do with that age old question of, do I stay or do I go? Yes, and so absolutely. I'm wondering, do you notice between the two, are there any similar challenges that pop up or, or even if it's high level or are there any, any sort of topics or themes that you notice that are in both. Yeah. So the one that sticks out in my mind the most is actually kind of what you just touched on, but it's this, it's this, um, when you find yourself stuck. And so, you know, whenever you are in the very, very, very hard decision of whether or not to leave your marriage, um, and pursue a path for yourself or for your family, um, in a different way, there is this moment. I feel like that everyone goes through where they feel stuck and, they don't know which path to take um, because it's a huge decision. And likewise in business and as people are building their businesses, I, I think that that happens over and over again in building a business um, where you find yourself at avenues where you're like, okay, or challenges, adversities where you don't know whether you should stay, go, pivot, you know, turn a different direction, evolve. Um, or just walk away completely. So there, there, there is that common theme of finding yourself stuck and navigating getting unstuck is a very common overlapping theme for sure. Which is why I felt like when you said, well, I'm kind of all over the map. I didn't see that at all because when you're talking about being stuck, de-shaming, like spotlighting yeah. the shame so that it, it just kind of dwindles and disappears because yeah. that's, yes. I, you, you're a better expert at that, but that is what I consistently hear. Like the minute you spotlight shame, it, yep. it, it loses its power. And then you need your intuition strengthened to know when you're stuck, which way to go. So yeah. I see it so connected, all three of yeah, them. Yeah, no, I agree. But like some people are like, oh my gosh, you're doing this and that and this, like, what are you? And I, I completely agree. And to that's me, when you say there's a common line. There's a common, there's a common theme here. <laughs> like, actually, that's one of the things I enjoy the most is I get to do, I get to use the same themes in multiple areas and reach multiple different people in the same way. It's so awesome. Cause then it strengthens and it doesn't make it as much of like a jack of all trades, queen of none. Right. Like you're the queen of, all of them and their spokes. 
that right. come from them, right? Which is so great. Yeah. Um, so I, I would love to kind of break this into, I guess, two parts. We'll, we'll touch on your podcast in a little bit, but the integrative divorce yeah. group, I, I, when yeah. I heard that you were co-founding this and running it, I, when, when you and you and I spoke, both spoke, we both re- first spoke, we both were like in line in the sense that we both have had our experience going through divorce and yep. none are the same. No, they're feel, all different. They're Every single all divorce different. Is different. They're all yes. different. And we did agree that you're making life decisions. If you choose, if you're in the process of going through it in a, you're making life decisions in a mental and emotional space that you should not be making life decisions. So oh, I love absolutely. knowing that you have this support for women and men in all 50 states. Can you just share a little bit about the offerings that it looks yeah. like for anybody who's like, I don't even know, I would want support, but I don't even know what it would look like to reach out to the integrative divorce group. Yeah, sure. So um, I think to really best like answer that, like I, I should probably first speak to my own experience. So I, it would have been, absolutely invaluable to me myself looking backward to have had someone who was of sound state in mind and also educated in the divorce system and who had also experienced it themselves but was no longer in that fight or flight um, place it would have been invaluable for me to have someone like that like um, for example like a, a memory just popped up on my Facebook yesterday of me crying about divorce with my kids. Like if you have been through it, you understand how painful it is um, and challenging. And I wish so much, I look back at that picture and I wish so much that I would have had the resources that we provide at Integrative Divorce Group. So our divorce coaching, it's divorce recovery coaching. And so it's for everybody who is contemplating divorce, going through a divorce, or even if you're years out from your divorce, it is for everyone because we believe that you're never, you're always recovering from divorce. That's what we believe. And our divorce coach, Adam Shelton, he is absolutely, oh my gosh, he is, he's amazing. And he is so educated in this divorce system as a family law attorney, former family law attorney. Um, but he also has been through it himself with kids and can really speak to, he really understands what people are going through. And then he also has the tools and resources and education to help talk someone down and figure out, help them get to the place where they can make the decisions that they need to make. Because like you said, whenever you're going through a divorce and you're going through mediation or you have your attorneys are speaking and fighting with each other or whatever type of divorce you are going through, you are still at the end of the day being faced with making life altering decisions in a state of overwhelm, grief, chaos, fear. Um, And those are not the types of emotions that you should be making life altering decisions from. So our service helps people get to the place where they can make the right choices for them and for their family going forward that they can look back on and say, yeah, I stand behind that because it was made from a sound mind instead of from those other emotions. I love Sorry. hearing the idea of having people who have gone through their own experience, but they're further, they're far enough out that they do allow themselves to have that more objective perspective. And, mm-hmm. and I would think that you, that the people that are offering any sort of support so that you make sure that they're not projecting their experience and that they're able to be very clear on this was my experience. I can offer ideas and ask questions, but this is this person's unique experience. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, we are a new and growing business, um, but our coaches are very vetted and they are very educated in trauma and um, being able to deal with all sorts of different kinds of trauma and not impart any of their own personal, um, they can, obviously they, they can offer advice from their own personal experience um, along with their education and understanding of the system itself and how to navigate it and how broken it is. Um, but 
yes, they would never impart their personal emotions um, from their experience onto our clients. Yeah, I mean, and, and it seems like a no brainer, but you just you just never know. And oh, so absolutely. To, yeah, the last thing thing. you need is is a coach who's like processing their stuff on you. Like, Through you, yeah, you're no, 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 no. But I, I also no, no. love that you start working with people who may even be in that shock of, whoa, this is a possibility. And it doesn't mean that it has to be. So I love right. that. And it doesn't even ha- mean that they have to go down that path. Yes. So, so one of the other things um, that we offer to people is compliment, complimentary consults, um, not only for divorce recovery coaching, but also for our mediation services. Because I think the scariest thing whenever you are facing um, divorce is it's unknown. You have no idea how things are going to look. And most people are not educated or understand the rules and, and the laws. Um, and so we offer that complimentary consult. Whereas an attorney, oftentimes it, from personal experience, I know I paid $400 for an hour's worth of a consult. And I don't really think I got very much out of it um, because they're really trying to get you to be a client. Do, do you know what I mean? And they're mm-hmm. trying to get you to... I don't know. It's, it's money. It's about money. And we understand that. We think that's a very broken way of approaching such, such a life-changing um, decision and big decision. And so we offer that consult to help people get a little bit better idea of what they're looking at should they choose to go down that path. And it's just, it's information and information should be available to people. Like it should not be hidden from anyone. Absolutely. I love everything about that. And I love the idea that you're coming from such a place that if you feel after this, that you need our services to help you further, great. But otherwise, we still want to give you what we could within this hour to at least have you come from up here to just settle in a little bit more so that you can see a little clearer. Yeah, Yeah, and absolutely. And we also offer do-it-yourself resources on our website for all 50 states because you actually can get divorced without an attorney in all 50 states. Uh, I don't think a lot of people understand that. And like we had a a client who she used our DIY resources on the website and her, her review back was, this was easier than getting my new driver's license with my old name on it. And so, you know, I, I don't, and that's, you know, that probably that might pertain to her specific state and her situation. Like you said, no two do- divorces are the same. Um, but we offer all those resources because it can be a rabbit hole to go on a government site and try to find out that information. It's hidden on purpose. It's hidden on purpose so that you hire an attorney and you pay a bunch of money and, and the wheel keeps spinning. And so we believe that everybody should have access to the information and then make choices that is best for their specific situation. That's so awesome. It's so awesome. I, I so hope people... I don't, I don't even care if it's one person who hears this to reach out to you. Yes, no, it same. makes, I think you'll have more, but I just, I think it's so awesome and, and it can feel so overwhelming and having an unbiased, a hundred percent supportive, objective perspective is so beneficial because a lot of times the people who are closest to you, you want to be able to rely on them and they want you to, but it can get so murky. So just, I just love, I love that. And I, I'm going to do a slight shift right now, but it's still connected yeah, yeah, yeah. in regards to, you had talked about, and there's, this was just the spectrum points, but that you work with people who are contemplating in a divorce, people mm-hmm. who are in the process and people who are years out because it is a lifelong experience to move through, which made me think of one of the areas that you and I talked about discussing was those, those moments of grieving aspects of ourselves. So anytime you're in a transition, there are parts of ourselves or, or versions of ourselves that either no longer fit. It's like a tight wool sweater, or we just maybe have to like cut the hem a little bit to like ease it out a little bit. And there's ways of saying, I'm going to shed this. I'm going to integrate this. And I'm going to completely shift gears. And I'm just wondering whether it's within your experience or what you've noticed through either through the integrative divorce group, or even with entrepreneurs on the podcast, has that come up at all in regards to being so cognizant of like, wow, I feel, I I saw so clearly 
parts of myself that was in the way, or I noticed mm-hmm. that I feel like a totally different person. Like what is the process of, of grieving versions of yourself look like? What does that look wow. like for people? Um, I'm going to speak from personal experience. Okay. Um, and then I might tie in some of my experience with speaking to entrepreneurs, but from personal experience, I feel, you know, I feel like we have a choice, um, whether we, uh, really take a hard look at ourselves and decide whether there are things that could areas where there could be growth. And I think some people choose not to do that. And I hope they eventually come to the place where they do choose growth, even though it's hard. Um, And one of the hardest things about growth that people don't talk about very often is this, you're doing so many things, right? You're improving yourself. Like, and whether it's as simple as starting an exercise routine or having somebody put a mirror in front of your face and say, Hey, these habits or these coping mechanisms or this, um, I don't know, behavior of yours is what is keeping you from success, keeping you from being happier, keeping you from being a better parent, business partner, employee, et cetera. Um, What they don't talk about though, is that as you're getting better and you're very happy with yourself and you're proud of yourself and you're, and it's so worth it. But also then there's new habits and people and choices that you have to make that are really hard. And then you grieve the old things. And so for me personally, I have had to recognize behaviors that do not serve me anymore. Um, Everything from oversharing to coping by having too much wine. Um, So I've had to address those things. But in doing that, I've also had to change the people I hang out with. And I've had to change the people, the places that I go. I've had to change who I'm talking to. And I grieve that kind of ignorant is bliss, right? Like I grieve that version of me that didn't give a shit and was like, oh, like whatever, like, let's just have a good time. Like that seemed a lot easier than being really conscious. And so, yeah, like, I don't, I think it looks like for me, what it's looked like, um, is naming it has been so um, helpful as grief because it is grief. But for a while I thought I was just depressed um, or was having anxiety. And I'm like, man, like, do I need to like go on antidepressants? Like what is wrong with me? Why am I sad when all these good things are happening? It's not sadness. It's not depression. It is grief over an old version of yourself. And I think that that's really normal. Um, But a lot of people don't talk about it. They don't. And I, I love you being able to discern that. And I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you having really worked on honing in on your intuition, even if you can't articulate it or logically make sense of it, it's, was it possible that your intuition was able to tell you like, it's not that I have to go on it. There's something it's not, it's not that it's just depression or anxiety and I need to go on an antidepressant. There's something else there. Did that play any part in in which way you went with how you were feeling. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, I had, um, several, uh, old friends, um, that are no longer in my life. Um, another grieving process, um, who for a very long time were like, Alicia, like you're sad all the time and you need to be on this pill and this pill and this pill and this pill. I am. So you should be, and I'm not anti-medication just So we make that clear. I think it is a very valuable tool for very specific purposes. Sure. Um, But intuitively, like inside of me, I didn't really think that was the answer. Um, And I I don't know. Exactly. It's something that I couldn't explain to them, which was very frustrating to them. Um, But intuitively, I was like, nah, that's not it. That's not it. And I didn't know the answer. I didn't know what it was. And then it was only um, a few months ago, actually. So, you know, man, months and months down this path of like continuously, like randomly having, you know, like I'm days where I'm just sad and I'm like, why am I sad? Everything's going awesome. Like this doesn't make any sense. Um, But I had this like epiphany, if you will, that I was like, oh, wait, I, I know exactly what this is. This is grief. Oh my gosh. Like, and just naming it, like they say that name it to tame it. Right. Like, just naming it was like, oh, like I can accept that. Like 
I can sit with that when it comes up. I can say, oh, okay, that's my grief. Like, it's okay. Let's just be extra nice to myself today. Like, that's a whole other thing than what's wrong with me. Like, I'm messed up, you know? You're, you, and you're so hitting, it's like you're reading this. I just wrote down a note that it, it's exactly what you just said because gr- there were two things that came up when you were like, oh, wait a second. I, I named it and it was grief and all these great things are happening. I always, I, I always go visual. So I always think of like when, and again, I, I'm speaking to myself, but that's what I was seeing with you too, is that all these things are going really well. And the sadness in your case, it seems it may not be the same with everybody. It's almost right. like a, a, a version of yourself is like hanging onto your leg. Like, don't let me go. <laughs> like, don't let me go. And there's, there's mm-hmm. fear there. Right. And so, cause the yeah. ego gets really amped up. So mm-hmm. being able to understand that as best you can, you know, it's like a willingness to also be wrong, but like best you can seem to help you just have the courage to go forward and say, this does, I don't know what's happening, but I'm going to at least say, is this grief? And then you were able to check in with your body to notice like, oh, that actually is it. And then down the road, it might be something else, but to at least pay attention to that. And I was going to say to you when if you had any coping mechanisms for people, we, we and we're going to touch upon the ones that you had talked about, maybe drinking too much wine, because we yeah. we had talked about unpacking that a little bit too. But yeah, yeah um, totally. You shifted so quickly how to do it in a very loving way. So instead of mentally berating yourself, mm-hmm. catching it so that you could say things that are a bit a bit kinder to yourself. Because when you're talking about changing behaviors and then changing relationships it can get really lonely and there could be a feeling of like, oh my gosh, what do I do when I'm feeling? So in addition to changing, like catching and changing what you're saying to yourself, do you have any other strategies that you or practices that you would offer to people who know in their heart and in their gut that the decisions they're making are really the best decisions for themselves, but maybe on the surface, they seem really hard because they do feel either challenging or they do feel really lonely and it would just be easier to go back to old ways. What are some practices to keep people moving in the best direction for themselves? Yeah. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm going through this in real time. So, um, I'm still learning what all those behaviors are. Um, Ooh, sorry. Um, it is, it is, it's really hard especially when you do know, you know, you're making the right decision. And that, and that, and that could be for anything in your life. Okay. So it doesn't have to be um, pertaining necessarily to divorce. It could be a job change. It could be a move. It could be changing your kid's school. It could be whatever that is. It could be, you know, going to bed at 8 p.m. 8 p.m. and getting up at five every day, even though everybody's like, you're insane. I don't understand that, but you know, it's the right decision. Like it could be big or small things. You just know you're doing the right thing. However, there is this, um, even in the conviction of knowing how right it is for you, there is a loneliness in in particular, that's the biggest emotion that I have felt um, that is challenging to overcome. And and that loneliness kind of lies to you because it, it tells you like, well, if you just like went back to your old thing, or if you just went back to the old way of doing things, then you wouldn't feel lonely and you don't want to feel lonely, do you? It's miserable. And it's very, very challenging. I had this, I had this moment literally last night, which is, so we are in the raw. Um, My kids just went on a vacation with their dad. um, And this will be the longest they've ever been away from me their whole life. And I came home from dropping them off. I have no plans this week. And whoo, that's a lonely place to be. Um, So what do you do? (laughs) What do you do in that moment? So The wrong answer is to reach for your old coping mechanisms. The wrong answer is to step back into who you used to be. The right answer is to just move the energy. And so things that I have found that helped um, or that help are doing something creative. So even if it's an adult coloring book, yes, I'm suggesting coloring, (laughs) Um, but adult coloring book, um, go for a walk set up plans actually to meet up with a friend, um, actually preemptively do that when you know there's going to be a triggering thing that's going to make you feel that way. Um, setting up plans. So you have something to look forward to and shift that energy. Um, that really helps with that transition. Um, I also think too, like thinking of what you can do in that moment that you couldn't do before. 
So, and then doing that thing, whether it's binge watching your favorite show or it's sitting on the phone or it's scrolling Pinterest or, you know, I don't going and checking out a new hike or like I like to hike um, or a new gym or whatever it is, like just do something, do something just for you and make yourself a really nice meal just because um, like, I don't know. Those are, those are a few of the things that I have found that help. Yeah. And, and, and you gave so many, so thank you. And one of the, the preemptive plan making, I think is huge. Mm -hmm. I feel like that, even if it's something where you're like, Oh, I feel lonely though. I don't have a lot of friends or my, my friends are away for the summer or they're with their partners or whatever. They're with their partners. Yeah. yeah look into like yeah. some sort of class that you can take, Yeah, you know, like do something so that it sets you up and, and see, I, I also noticed too, like certain nights that my kids are with their dad, I will plan something that night for like an hour. Like I started playing tennis on one of those nights. So it just awesome. gets me out of the house the minute it's also, and I have to add in, it's such a great emotional release. So like having like hitting a ball or doing boxing yeah. or running or some sort of movement and yep. doing social. So there's like that net of there's the social, but then there's the emotional. So it, it yep. it's so helpful. Um, the making a meal I love too. If you're rolling your eyes and you're like, oh, I hate cooking, then don't cook, do something else, but right. Do something else. Really, right. Yeah. If it's I, not your I, thing. It's not your thing. Like, yeah, I think it's, I think yeah. your point there is take advantage of like, Ooh, wow. What's something that if I was home with the kids or if I was, you know, that with I couldn't the, do that I couldn't do, or when I was with my, yeah. you know, my old partner or old friends that maybe would have mocked it. Like, what can I do right now? That is yeah. really, really fun. Um, yeah. Well, and also too, that. like embracing the idea in that, in that loneliness and, you know, and whatever that loneliness is stemming from, whether it's that you've separated yourself from things that are, you know, people or groups of people that are no longer healthy for you, or if it is that you, you know, have been through a divorce and you're finding yourself on your own. Um, but embracing the idea that you don't have to check in with anybody else to make a decision. Like you can literally just make a decision on the fly. Oh, I'm going to turn down that street. I'm going to go check out that restaurant. I'm going to go down this path. Like, I mean, you can literally just do whatever you want. You don't have to ask anybody's permission. You don't have to see how they feel. It doesn't have any bearing on anybody else. And really embracing that um, helps also. A hundred percent. And it's something that you'll be able to ease back in. I'm just hearing people saying like, okay, well, you know, that's so selfish to only care. Then what about when you start dating? Some you'll move back in, you'll find your way back into okay. compromise. That's not like, this is the time to indulge. <laughs> so right. yes, yeah. yeah. enjoy can. it, take advantage exactly. of exactly like, and see it that way. Like it's a mind mindset shift mm -hmm. of seeing it as an opportunity as opposed to a burden or, um, like a, I don't know, a negative situation, like embracing it as like an opportunity to do whatever you want, an opportunity to be selfish. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even if it's just for a short lived time. Exactly. And, and I can't reiterate again, what you were saying about, cause I'm looking at like opportunity or dreading the time. And so mm -hmm. what you were saying before about the preemptive planning that a friend yeah. of mine had suggested that over a year ago, like when, when life started opening up a little bit more and it yeah. was a game changer, it was so, and I got excited and I was able to like put things on the calendar and I reached out to friends I hadn't seen since we were all kind of closed up. And so yeah. that one, um, I would say people run with that because that also has to, like, you can fill in the grid with whatever speaks to you, but it does yeah. give you something to look forward to. I love that. And I, yeah. I did want to talk to you. You had mentioned about coping me mechanisms that are hurtful or coping mechanisms that are helpful. And you and I have spoke before about alcohol consumption yes. and, yes. you know, you and I both have had our, our love affair, bumpy road with, with booze. And yeah. I would just, I would love to hear your, just your perspective on, and now I want to preface this by saying this is in regards to being able to function in society where there isn't an unhealthy addictive connection. Right. This is alcohol. not alcoholism. We're talking about adjusting your relationship, adjusting um, your relationship as, as someone who does not have an addiction. Right. Exactly. So, you said okay. it much better than I did. So thank you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so what, if you could share, what was it that 
what were moments where you were able to say, you know what, I need to reel in a little bit and moments when you were able to like, how did you readjust? So you were a bit more in control of your relationship with alcohol. Yeah. So I think it started, honestly, it probably started over a year ago with this, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, a voice, um, it's intuition, but it was like, this isn't serving me. Um, and I need to adjust this. And then I kept blowing right past it, to be honest. Um, because, you know, I think, I think for a few reasons, um, but we live in a society that has this like wine mom culture, like, oh, my kids are fussy today. Oh my God. Should we start drinking at like 2 PM? Like at what point do we switch from coffee to wine? Like Like when they wine, we wine kind of wine. I don't think I have a shirt that says that. Like, so, so, and it's funny. It's funny to an extent. Um, and so I think, you know, my friends and I, we would all get together and have wine. Um, this is the pre COVID this is pre divorce. And, uh, we, shit, we would have freaking like play dates at like noon and have wine. Like, you know, like we weren't getting wasted or anything, but like, you know, but we'd have some wine because that's what you do whenever you're a mom. Like, and so then flash forward, we're in a pandemic and for me, for me personally, so we're in a pandemic, um, literally had split with my husband, um, three months prior to the pandemic starting. So going through a divorce, moving by myself, trying to find a place for me and my kids to live, selling our house, all that. And I couldn't be around any of my friends. And so for me, it was, it became kind of, instead of just like a relaxing thing, it became my only coping mechanism. It made me feel less alone. It was companionship. Right. It was companionship. And I also found that it was easier for me to open up um, and you know, text with my friends, um, whenever I had been drinking. Um, but at a certain point that it's off balance and it's, it's, I think that's true of a lot of things in life that could be true of your eating habits or, you know, how little or much you exercise. There's, there's balance to everything. And I was off balance and I knew it, but I didn't want to face it. I was not ready. I guess I hadn't done enough growth to, (laughs) to be able to do it. And then I don't know, like a few months ago, I I don't really know what really triggered it entirely. Like, um, but I, one of it, one of the things was this song that I heard, it's called, um, Dear Alcohol by Dax. And if you read the lyrics, like I sent it to my best friend and she was like, you could have written the song. You've literally said every word in the song. And I was like, I know. And I don't know. It was just like this, like, all right, I'm going to, I'm just going to try. And I didn't really know what to do because a lot of, I don't know if, if you found this as well, but I was looking for like an app to help track my progress and like, kind of give me like some kudos. And, um, I couldn't find most of them are for being sober. And I, that was not my goal. And I tend to get caught up in a, like all or nothing. So it's pass or fail. Like there is no in between. And that was absolutely not the way I wanted to go. I did not want to look at this as a pass or fail. So I actually found this app, it's called Habit, and you can create your own habits. Um, so I have a couple that I toggle between. One is no drinks at all. I, I have it, and you can make up your own name. So mine says no drinky drinks. Um, <laughs> it like has like a, I don't forget what emoji I put with it, but it's, it makes me laugh. Yeah, well, um, that's, and, look at your face. It's like, it makes right. it more <laughs> doable, totally. Right, and then, and then the other one is two drinks or less. Um, because then it's like, it's having, it's okay to have a drink. Like I'm not, I'm not an alcoholic. Like, so this isn't an addiction problem. It's a behavioral and coping thing. And so, um, so that one is in moderation basically. So, and I track those and instead of it being like a pass or fail, it's a like, Hey, look, the majority of the time we're not drinking. That was the goal. Great. And then when we are, we're drinking within moderation and balance also very healthy. So good job. So that's, I don't know, I've set myself up for success, I guess. I love that. And I, I love that you, again, the self-awareness piece of you knowing yourself that you do have a tendency to be all or nothing. So you needed something that was going to give you a spectrum or a continuum and that you were yeah. able to have fun with it. Like it's so, it's so great when you are shifting habits to bring play into it. It just keeps yes. it so much more tenderized, um, yeah. you know, and 
thank you so much for, for sharing that. I feel like yeah. there are so many specifically women more so than men I found that do fall into that camp of reaching for, whether it's for companionship or whether it's for anxiety or whether it's for just like, I've earned this. So yeah, I've earned earn this. this, you know? And so I'll just add on to, to what my challenges were just for anyone who's listening to kind. So it was paralleling yours to a degree, but it was, it was more out of nights were hard for me. Like at the end, especially when the kids were, I would have moments where it was companionship. And one way that I helped myself with that was I, just like we were talking about before setting up the preemptive plans. Oh yeah. Set up plans in the morning. So I would commit to myself, like, I want to write in the morning, or I'm going to be writing in the morning, or I would so even, I need to be a clear or sound mind and get good sleep. Yes, and, exactly. Yeah. Or I would oh, set I up a walking that. date with a friend in the morning, like early. And I would yeah. kind of say to them, you know, I'm early. So we got to do like six. I would even push it earlier than I'd want, because then I would <laughs> like six 30, we're going to go for a walk. And I was like, oh my gosh. Um, and just, I love that one. I'm going to start that. That's a great one. Too. It's so super like helpful. And then again, you get that social piece and you're yep. also moving and it yeah. doesn't have to be well, it's rewarding and you're it's rewarding. rewarding. And yeah, I mean, not to, and not even to say that, like, in addition to finances, it, it helps there and it helps totally. just health wise. And it, there is something that is very, very confident building when you take back the reins over anything that you might be dipping a little bit too much into, yep. you know, so just look, and and one thing that proving it to yourself. Yes. Like, so I think, I think part of it too, and this is, this could speak to a lot of different things. It has nothing to do with even like coping mechanisms, but when you promise yourself, you're going to do something and you actually follow through that trust and confidence you build in yourself is freaking priceless. Mm -hmm. And that builds upon itself in all areas of your life. Like it it doesn't have to be about that. It could be, I promise I'm going to write because I want to write a book. Like, so I promise I'm going to write and then you do it and you're like, Oh, I showed up. Mm -hmm. I showed up for myself. I actually did this. That confidence, it propels itself like at light speed afterward. It totally does. And that's something too, like you knowing that going back to like the all or nothing, because I have a tendency to do that too. I think there are a lot of people who that yeah. if you know, that is something that you have a tendency to do, then to not set yourself up for failure, give yourself a little grace. So mm-hmm, it right. might be that you're going to write just a few days in the morning, or you're going to go for a walk a few days with friends, instead of being like every morning, I'm going to get up and I'm going to oh, write. Yeah. Morning. If it's too restricted, you're setting yourself up. Like, and I used to be that way. I love to plan things. I love to get out the calendar and like set up like every hour. And like, if I do this every day for the next like 60 days, then da, 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 da. BS life is going to happen, you know, whether it is like kids or your job, or, um, you just don't feel well, like it doesn't matter, but like something is going to come up and like interrupt that. And Mm -hmm. then if you face that and you're so dead set on the only way for success is if you do this thing every single day at the exact same time, then when a bump comes up and you don't hit it that day, then you quit because you think you failed. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you didn't fail. Look how many times you were successful. You were successful 30 days out of 34 that's success. Like, I love that. Pull back to the whole picture, like to the big picture. Right. Yeah. Back that's to the, so great. Like the podcast and everything else. Like, don't look at this one, like, and it's not all or nothing. It's not mm-hmm. pass or fail. It is life is gray, man. It is not black and white. Oh, I love that. And, and it's so true with, and, you know, even circling back to quickly touch on your podcast and we'll put all the links so people can check it out in the yeah, show notes. Thank you so much. The, absolutely. The, the idea of it's not all black and white. So going back full circle to like that feeling of feeling stuck, realizing that the decisions that you're making don't have to be all or nothing. You stay or you go all at once. And so being able to um, understand that from a perspective of relationship, romantic, or it's a position job business that you're starting to specifically with your podcast when you're when you're hearing that are you noticing that entrepreneurs are offering 
on your podcast, is there, are there any guests that you've had that you're like, oh, I love this tip when you're in that stuck point that this one person offered that isn't black and white, that does kind of just allow a slight shift. Anyone? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, so many, um, but a few of them have been to, uh, actually two people have offered the same advice and it's something so easy. Um, actually the guy that was on my show or I interviewed him last week, it'll come out this Thursday. His name is Sean Gray, but he offered this advice of, of a pause, um, which is the same as, um, my first guest on the podcast, Jen Bullock. Um, but it, like, it's not a race. So, um, the wheels are not going to completely fall off if you take a minute to find the answer because, and as you and I have talked, um, we believe that that answer does lie inside of you of what you should do. You just have to find the space to hear it um, and to get in touch with that. And I don't know, like, like he was talking specifically about transitioning careers and he had no idea what he wanted to do. And instead of like, oh, I need to make this decision right now. And like, I have to know what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life right now. He chose to really step back. And I, I think he even mentioned it took him a few months to really kind of like sit in it, explore different things, figure out what it was, what his purpose was as opposed to a job um, that he wanted. And when he found his purpose, then he looked for careers that would help him serve that purpose. And so in that way, he found an answer. He's very happy with what he does. So I, I think that pause, like, and I was explaining to him, like, I have this tendency to also go 150 miles an hour and like, we're not like, we are rolling through stop signs. If there's nobody at the intersection, we're going like, and I don't want to stop. I don't want to pause. I think that I'm going to somehow like run out of time and really embracing the idea that it's okay to pause and like the world's not going to completely like crumble underneath your feet and allow yourself to come up with the right answer instead of the quick fix answer, which never leads down a long road, I don't think. Um, so I think that that has been some really powerful um, advice that that people have given. So getting in touch with your intuition um, and taking taking the time to do that. So they kind of go hand in hand. They totally do. And I love that his last name is Gray. Like there's the gray <laughs> in between. <laughs> yeah. It's so perfect. Oh my God. Wow, <laughs> that all tied together. Full circle. <laughs> Alicia, thank you so much. Is there anything that's still in your mind that you feel could benefit anybody listening in regards to what we were talking about today? Oh man, not nothing really, really stands out. Um, I think the only thing I would say is that I'm an open book. So if you, if any of this, like you have questions about, or it was interesting to you, like, please reach out to me. Um, like you can shoot me a DM. Um, you can send me an email, like just reach out. You can send us a message on integrative divorce groups saying like, just ask the question. You're not going to be wrong for asking a question. And I am more than willing to share resources or my own personal experiences. If it helps somebody else. Mm, you totally are. And what, what would be the best place for people to reach you? Um, the best place is probably on my Instagram. That's where I hang out the most. Um, and my handle is at sassy underscore freckles. Um, I've thought about changing it, but it so fits me that I, <laughs> that I can't, that I can't bring myself to change it. Um, and you could also reach out to me as well, um, at integrative divorce on Instagram as well. And we'll have those in the show notes too, for people. To yeah. And them. we'll also, I'll also provide you the links to, um, book complimentary consults for divorce recovery coaching. If, if you just want to learn more about it and what it is and how it can help you maybe. Um, or if you would like to hear about how we do things differently with our mediation, I'll send those links to you as well. That's awesome. Or if you know anybody who may benefit too from right, the that's the thing too is sure. like you know just because you're not going through a divorce. Like I, I was at a networking event months ago, and you know every people were like, oh, so what's your business? Blah 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 blah. And I would explain, and they're like, oh well, I've been happily married. I'm like, I awesome for you. Like I don't, I don't want anyone to get divorced, really. Like, but if you are finding yourself in that place. I guarantee you, you know, somebody, whether it's your friend or a family member, a coworker who's going through it, we just want to help because there's a better way to do it. And it makes me wonder too, do you have anything for people 
who are supporting those going through divorce? Like, do you have any, Mm -hmm. you know, best practices? Like, how can I, I feel so helpless. How can I support Mm -hmm. this person I love who's going through it? Do you have any resources Mm -hmm. or anything like that? Man, this is real time too. Um, So I actually, I have someone that I know who is going through this and is, is right getting into the thick of it. And, um, his closest friend has not been through it. And I don't think really fully understands. Um, so I think a lot of people think like, oh, well, they're filed. They're like, it's, it's done. Like the emotions are over because like you filed for divorce. Um, I don't think a lot of people understand that you, even if it's the right choice, um, even if you kind of don't like that person anymore, you still grieve the life you planned for you grieve the memories that you have. And so understanding, um, and checking on people. So check on, check on your friends who are going through divorce or even people who are, you know, years out from it, like they're still dealing with it. There's still those moments of grief that pop up for them and being able to just even say that you understand or like say, Hey, like I'm here for you. I know that this holiday might be challenging. Um, just those types of things and understanding that You can, someone can be both super happy that they made that decision and also grieving it at the exact same time. You can hold both emotions. And often I think people do. And I don't think a lot of people who haven't been through it understand that aspect of it because it's complicated. Totally. I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I feel like just to close that piece out a lot of times too, it's okay to admit that you don't know what to do and just say, I feel so helpless and I don't know what to do for you. And a lot of times it's just companionship. Like you and I have yeah, said, yeah, like, ask me to like, hang out. <laughs> I, I just want to watch a Netflix. I don't even want to talk, you know, like, yeah, even yeah. Offering that, like you can come over yep. for Netflix and we don't have to say a word. I won't yep. even ask you about how you're feeling. And sometimes that's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I don't want to talk yep. about how I'm feeling. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just yeah. Watch so it doesn't movie. have to be exactly. It doesn't have, it's understanding mm-hmm. what they're going through. And then you don't have to have a big old talk with them or get them to open up or, or fix just, it or try to or fix, or, you can't yeah. fix it so yeah. like but just be there like be available ask them they're also I don't know if this is true for you but um I find even now you know like I'm two years out from my divorce and even now there are times when like I can't even think of what I would want to do and to invite someone like it just seems like so much effort. I realize how silly that sounds. Um, but having someone else invite me to go do something, just invite me, like no matter what it is, like watching Netflix and chilling, like that sounds lovely. We don't have to talk. We don't have to get into a serious conversation. Like you don't need to be my therapist, like just hang out with me, offer me some companionship and let me know that I'm not alone. Oh, I love that. And I can, that's it. We're going to seal it on that. Alicia, thank you so much for yes, everything you so much. that you offered. It was, it's so fantastic. And I feel like people are going to be able to just take so many pieces to apply to life. So, which is the whole point. So thank you yeah. so much. Well, thank you for having me on. I love this. This is so great to be in this spot.